for today's Grim Adventure. We're here in Oregon visiting the Timberline Lodge. This hotel that's behind me, this was the Overlook Hotel in the movie The Shining. Now, before we go any further, I should point out that Stanley Kubrick actually didn't even film here on site at all. Instead, he built an exact replica of this hotel, the Timberland Lodge, over in England. When I say exact replica, you're going to lose your mind when you see it. With that being said, knowing that the actual filming location of this place is fake, does it really make sense to line up shots? Well, it was almost an identical set that they built. So yes, we can line up shots. So let's go ahead and do that now. Where to begin? Oh yeah, it's also good to point out that this place is an active ski zone. Is that even a word? I mean, basically people come here and they ski. It is a mountain, they do have snow. It's 70 degrees right now and what you're looking at is snow. And just so you know, because I know somebody's gonna say, hey you guys, you should have got a drone. You should have brought a drone to get an aerial shot of the Timberline Lodge. We did bring our drone with us. We call it the ghostly swoosh, but this place is a strict no drone zone for the safety of all the skiers and all the people here. So we brought it, we can't fly it. So we're gonna do as best as we possibly can. You ready? It's really bright, but this is really beautiful. All right, let's do this. As a result of not being able to fly our drone, we can't get that really cool sweeping helicopter shot that also shows Mount Hood behind the building. So this is as close as we're gonna get. So this is our establishing shot. One of the next shots we see of the Overlook Hotel, the camera is somewhere out there in the trees. And you can see this embankment, because it's an establishing shot, again, pretty much any time they show the hotel what's going on inside it, you would have gotten this angle right here. And there's Jessica looking absolutely beautiful in the sun. Your hair is so vibrant. If I wasn't wearing sunglasses, my eyes would burn out of my head. <laughs> now here's a great time to talk about this. Stanley Kubrick, he was a master at filmmaking, but a lot of people loved his movies and a lot of people hated his movies. Stephen King reportedly hated his version of The Shining so much because he changed so much. Now, I love The Shining. I think it's great. I think it's a cult classic, not a cult classic, it's a masterpiece. But here's another example of how Kubrick changes things. Now, here's the real Timberline Lodge. That right there in the center of your screen, that is the entrance to the Timberline Lodge. Now, when Stanley Kubrick built the exact replica of this, you see this portion right over here? This bit right here? This was the entrance. So in his version that he built, move that over here and get rid of this whole section. And you have the Overlook Hotel. Other than that, basically, it's all the same. For the most part, everything's the same. I mean, if you look closely, you can see some differences, but the general shell is still there that you can tell that this was a huge inspiration for Kubrick making The Shining. Now, with that being said, in Kubrick's world of The Shining, right over here in the parking lot is where the hedge maze would have been. Now, if I back up a little bit, now picture this. The hotel right there with that entrance I'm sorry, that entrance right there, move it over, 
The hedge maze would have been to the right of your screen where all the cars are parked. Famous hedge maze. It's quite an attraction around here. The walls are 13 feet high, and the hedge is about as old as the hotel itself. Uh, here's another example of Kubrick's creativity. Now you see this portion of the hotel, that gigantic swooping slant. You kind of want to ride a sled down it if it was covered in snow. You can see that in the movie as Jack Nicholson and Shelley Duvall are getting a tour. They walk right past this and this is where the snow track, I think they call it a snow cat even though it says snow track, T-R-A-C on it. But they call it a snow cat. It's right there and they say, hey, do you know how to do you drive a car? And they say, yeah. And then yeah, you'd have no problem driving the snow cat. That would have all been right here. That's our snow cat. Can you both drive a car? Yes. Yeah. That's fine. Because basically the snow cat operates very much like a car and it won't take you long to get the hang of it. Now, I'm not entirely sure if these used to be garages. They kind of look like it, don't they? They're all covered up now with these little wooden slats, but it's just another thing that makes you go, hmm, The Shining, oh yeah, I get it. So once again, it doesn't make any sense, but in the movie, Stanley Kubrick's hedge maze would have been right over there where the cars are. That's where they would have been. And if we pan over this way, this is the entrance of the Timberline Hotel. But the Overlook Hotel, it was a lot different. It looked like that portion that's over there. And with that being said, looking at the movie and looking at the layout here and blending them two together, you see this portion of the hotel right here? And more importantly, that window right there? I think, both Jessica and I think, that that is the one that Danny comes out and then slides and down the embankment, the yeah. snow, and then he runs directly across to the maze, which would have been right there. Hmm. It makes sense. It's all the magic of Hollywood and Kubrick was a master at it. Movie magic. Mixing the master, the, what do you call it? The, the mastery of Kubrick and the writing mastery of Stephen King. It's sad that Stephen King didn't like Kubrick's version of it. It was his baby, I guess. Yeah. He said that it was, it was visually appealing and there was a lot of suspense, but he, he took a lot of the story out, like it was stripped down. And it does feel like that, doesn't it? It seems like a simple story. I never read the book, so I can't comment on what's missing. All right, so let's go inside and see what they have in the way of The Shining. And I've seen all kinds of different videos inside this place. And they're all beautiful. There's some m amazing woodwork. But we're here for The Shining. When it comes to the movie The Shining, there's really not much here except for a gift shop and a few props like this axe that says, here's Johnny. And on the top, I don't know if you can tell, might have to zoom it in, it says, forged by Red Rum Axe Company. And they also have this plaque over here that says 1980, The Shining at Timberline Lodge. The Shining, based on the Stephen King novel of the same name, used aerial shots of Timberline as part of its opening scene. Film of the exterior of Timberline Lodge was used for some establishing shots of the fictional Overlook Hotel throughout this cult classic. I kind of want to take this home. I don't know if I want to give it back to them or not. Yeah. Here's Grimm. <laughs> in the book, The Shining, the room, the haunted room that freaks Danny out is number 217. That's how Stephen King wrote it. But when Kubrick was here making the movie, The Shining, the hotel was a little leery about having room 217 being listed because they were afraid that people weren't gonna to wanna to come here and stay here. So they changed it in the movie to 237. There is a 217 here in the hotel. There is no 237, but people come here and ask for it all the time. For some reason, they're closing down the mountain. They shut all the ski lifts off, which is fine, because I can walk back this way, get a shot of the peak, and hopefully behind the Timberline Lodge. That wind is really picking up, isn't it? All 
Not seeing anything else that screams shining back here. The real tell is going to be looking. Oh, look, it's snow. The real tell is going to be looking at the back of the building directly. I kind of want to hit Jessica with the snowball. Oh, she would kill me. Yeah, I think so. There's so many people. And the wind is getting crazier. Come stay right here. All right. Yeah, they definitely didn't use the back in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> Baby goal, I'm not knocking Stanley Kubrick as a director in any way, shape, or form, but a lot of people consider The Shining to be a masterpiece, like his mm -hmm. masterpiece. Mm -hmm. But the more you look at the movie and the hotel, nothing lines up. Like his version, which is awesome, it's his design, right? Yeah. Yeah, so the hedge maze in the movie is behind the hotel, but it's also in front of the, mo the hotel, I almost said motel. But if you also look at the aerial shots, the establishing shots, the hedge maze is nowhere to be found, but yet it's right next to the building. Yeah, no, I mean, they use shots like that a lot in film. They kind of just expect you to not pay attention and that you'll miss it, and that happens, that's like really common. To be honest, mm -hmm. Up until now, I've seen that movie so many times, I've never noticed it until I dissected it for this video. So now, anybody who watches it, they're gonna be like, oh man, Kubrick screwed up. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this or not, but I'm gonna try to show it to you guys. Now you see that tree right there, and then you also see that lamppost. Now if you look right about here, Part of the forest over there is on fire, and that's where all that smoke is coming from. Crazy. I think this is as close as we're gonna to get to the actual mountain itself. From what we've heard, the ski lift has been closed, so nobody should be coming down the mountain. Looks like there's a few people going up there, so I don't know what that's about. We're definitely not skiing. I'd probably die if I did that. Sled riding, I can do. Skiing, nope, ain't gonna happen. Look at that baby ghoul. We moved to California and it's June and we're standing in snow. <sighs> you better watch it, I'm gonna throw a snowball at you. You can't go up there, baby ghoul. I'm already up there. Are you gonna roll down the hill or are you gonna slide? Walk. Walk, go for it. When I see somebody coming down, I think you're good, go for it. Oh, you're coming back down. Careful. Hey, baby ghoul, what were you telling me earlier about how coming here is forcing you to wear shoes that you don't like to wear? What's this about? Sneakers. Socks. That's right. Like it. You only wear flip-flops. In fact, I don't like my feet in shoes that surround my feet that I can't kick off. <laughs> that I can't just slide. I don't like it. My feet are so sweaty. I think, so hot. I think you're supposed to wear boots in the snow. And there she goes. It's like Sasquatch, but you're not a Sasqu Sasquatch, Jessica, but it's like a Yeti sighting, you know? Like the legendary animal? No. Don't you dare throw that at me. <laughs> and there she goes. She's lucky I love her, but I think I'm gonna have to hit you with a snowball. <laughs> you still missed. This is like the most lamest snowball fight in the world. Yeah. And that's pretty much it for the Overlook Hotel. I'm sorry, the Timberline Lodge here in Oregon. It's absolutely beautiful. To be quite honest though, we're not spending the night here. It's about $300 a night. And we saw the rooms, they're rather small. Now, personally, if you're a big fan of movies like horror movies and Stephen King and you want to come here and see The Shining, the shell of The Shining, it makes sense. But other than that, there's really not much. If you're a skier, however, this is like the mecca of places to ski. I think they're open all year round and they have snow all year round. Like I said, it's June, getting ready to go into July. And t-shirts, shorts, flip-flops, and people are skiing down 
a mountain. It's called Mount Hood. Did I say that? I don't know if I said that at any time during this video. This is another bucket list item knocked off my list. And with that being said, thank you for joining us on another grim adventure, this time to the Overlook Hotel. And as always, happy Halloween. Are you crushing my head? It crushed it. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> Wherever I come, I'm in love. It's come my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. Is that in state? Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's all.